Test, test. Here we go. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Alive and well? Blessed and highly favored? Amen. <laughs> if you all want to stand, we're going to open with a word of prayer. Jesus, Lord, we love you. We thank you for oh, the time that we have together, Lord. We thank you that we can gather openly, Lord. We thank you for the breath in our lungs and that you have given us another day of life. Oh, Holy Spirit, we pray that you show up right now and that you we would be aware of your presence, Lord, for you are always with us. Help us to be aware of that in this time, Lord. Help us to block out the distractions of everyday life, Lord, uh, wherever they may come from, Lord. I pray in this time that we could focus in on you and receive all that you have for us, Lord, and that our worship would be pleasing before you. We love you. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> We're heaven spun creations, his pride and adoration, treasure woven by his love. His careful hands, they hold us safe within his promise of calling and of destiny. How sing of all you've done and i remember how far you've carried me from beginning to the end you are faithful faithful to the end a father's heart that's for me a never-ending story of love that's always chasing me His kindness overwhelming And hope for me unending He's never 
given up on me I will sing of all you've done And I remember how far you've carried me From beginning until the end You are faithful, faithful to the end Till the end Till the end Till the end There was in a day that you weren't by my side There was in a day that you let me fall And all of my life your love has been true And all of my life I will worship you There was in a day that you weren't by my side There was in a day that you let me fall And all of my life Your love has been true And with all of my life I will worship you And there wasn't a day That you weren't by my side And there wasn't a day That you let me fall And with all of my life your love has been true, and for all of my life, I will worship you. I will worship you. I will worship you. I will worship you. And I will sing of all you've done And I'll remember how far you've carried me From beginning to the end You are faithful, faithful to the end I will sing of all you've done and I'll remember how far you've carried me From beginning to the end You are faithful, faithful to the end And to the end And to the end And there won't be a day that you're not by my side And there won't be a day that you let me fall And with all of my life, your love will be true And with all of my life, we will worship you And there won't be a day that you're not by my side and there won't be a day that you let me fall And with all of my life, your love will be true And with all of our lives, we will worship you Let's give the Lord a praise offering You are the medicine The only cure for everything I feel within Redeeming what was lost and all that could have been Oh, this is 
is a healy kind of love You are the truest friend Staying through the night when I was at my end Comforting my heart till it was light again Oh, this is a faithful kind of love An everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God with us to heal with me. Wonderful Counselor, the government is resting on His shoulders. His shoulders, You are the final word. You alone decide when every page will turn So I will trust the timing, I will rest secure Oh, this is a steady kind of love Oh, you are an everlasting Father, Prince of Peace Emmanuel, God with us, you heal with me. Wonderful counselor, the government is resting on your shoulders, your shoulders. An everlasting father, prince of peace. Emmanuel, God with us, you heal with me. Wonderful counselor, the government is resting on your shoulders, your shoulders. Oh, how we love your name. Oh, And your name say it all, they say it all. I stand in awe of you. And your name say it all, they say it all. I stand in awe of you. And your name say it all, they say. Standing of you and your name say it all, they say it all. I stand in of you and everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and many well, God with us, you here right here with me. Wonderful counselor, the government is resting on your shoulders, your shoulders. An everlasting father, prince of peace, Emmanuel, God with us, you hear the Wonderful counselor, the government is resting on your shoulders, your shoulders. Stand in, 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 in
Father, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God with us, you hear out here through. Wonderful Counselor, the government is resting on my shoulders, my shoulders. Just uh, take a moment and think about who God is. There's so many different names in the Bible for all the things that he that he does for us and he is. He's the provider. He's God with us. He's with us all the time and he's breathed life into our lungs. You know, he breathed life into Adam. That was life that we have in the flesh. But then you see later on Jesus came and he breathed life into the disciples and and the Holy Spirit comes and he breathes that new life into you. And it's like you were dead and now you're alive. And how amazing, how amazing it really is. And so this last song we're going to play before we get into the message is called On the Altar. And it's really just a, a response to like what God did for us and where hopefully your heart is because of what he did for us. So. Here's my life as a sacrifice I'll be the incense, the sweetest fragrance Holy yours, consecrated for only you, Lord Just for you, Lord Cause I'm your temple dwelling place for you Lord make my heart a pleasing home for you oh, I will live on the altar oh you are worth what you asked for if you serve Searching for a heart is your reward, then I am yours. In your house, I'll daily live, fixed on one thing to see your beauty, cause you alone are worth more than gold. Pray the word for a day in your courts Cause I'm your temple A dwelling place for you yeah. Lord, make my heart A pleasing home for you And oh Searching for a heart is your reward. And if you're searching for a heart, is your reward. And if you're searching for a heart, is your reward. Then I am yours. Oh, yeah. I'm yours. Sacrifice 
want to lay it down before you this morning. Uh, Holy Spirit, just fill this room, fill our hearts, fill our minds, God, with just exactly what we need from you, Lord. Fill us up. Fill us up. Do what only you can do. Lord, we give this time to you, and we entrust you to do what only you can do. Lord, you do it in our hearts. You change things in us. You rearrange things. God, that we can never do on our own. Father, I pray that you help us to continue to keep our eyes on you, our gaze towards you as we go into the message and as we have times of fellowship after service, Lord, that our eyes stay Stay focused focused on you, Jesus, that this is what you are doing in us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You guys may have a seat. Welcome to Anchor Church. If you're new, man, we're happy to have you. Um, thank you for joining us this morning, and um, we have uh, something a little special today. Uh, I, got a, I got a good friend coming in to share, uh, but before we get into the message, um, uh, we, we want to talk about generosity. So, you know, we've been dealing with generosity as a church this whole month, and so as we talk about giving, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm praying that God begins to shift some things in our minds and in our hearts as we think about giving. Um, these are different ways that you can give to Anchor Church. And one thing that has consistently been on my mind when I think about generosity is that is giving financially is the cheapest form of giving. And I've said that before. Giving financially is the cheapest form of giving. When God asks us to live generously, when we talk about our core value of generosity, you know, finances, it's, it's the lowest form. It's easy to just throw some money at it, but to give your heart, to give your mind, to give your energy, to invest, to get into the messiness of what God has called us to, it takes so much more. And that's tough. We talked about sowing and reaping. You know, you reap what you sow and you reap where you sow. And so um, as a church, you know, we believe in generosity. We believe in giving, uh, giving our first fruit. So these are the different ways you can give. You can give online at anchordenver.org. You can drop off a check 
We have a black box in the back back there with the water that you can give in person. You can mail it to some uh, our office here or the Forge office, uh, and you can text to give through our website. But but we encourage you to continue to do that. And we've been talking about generosity. You know, we'll talk about it for the next couple of weeks because it's one of our core values. We've talked about discipleship. We've talked about belonging. We've talked about radical love. And, and generosity is just one of those core values that we see that when you live it out, you look like Jesus. That's what we talked about last week, that when you give, th- those are moments that you look like Jesus. That's what he's called us to. Um, and so do that. Um, we have some other cool housekeeping stuff for you, Power Anchor Church. Uh, our men's ministry is getting kicked off next Saturday on the 21st. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, we're going to get the guys together, get some testosterone flowing, you know what I'm saying? Get some food. Rah, rah, you know. Um, so next Saturday at 8 a.m., uh, the location, uh, it, it hasn't been set in stone yet, but please connect with either Tanner or Rico. Rico is leading up our men's ministry, and we'll meet once a month together as a group of guys and, and just hold each other accountable love on each other, you know, press in into the things that God is doing in us. And, you know, um, one thing as, as men, when I talk about this is, you know, we talk about just, just no more excuses not to live up to who God has called us to be as men. And so it should be really fun. Uh, I, I love to see it. I know the ladies are going to be doing some stuff real soon. It's been stirring in them. Uh, I've had individual conversations with different ladies and they're like, man, we need to do this. I'm like, do it, go for it, run with it. Um, and, and that time will come. But for the men, that's going to be uh, next Saturday. So uh, you should have got a text message. If you didn't, um, let me know so we can connect for, for next Saturday meeting. And our food bank is going to be open. We're going to work on it this Thursday. We couldn't this last Thursday because Cole was out of town. Uh, and he, you know, if Cole's not around, we just can't do anything. Okay, That's the truth. I'm like, Cole's not there? All right, guys, we're not going to get to work, no. Um, But he'll be back, and so we'll be back to work Thursday night um, at 7 p.m. We'll be putting the stuff together. I'm going to try to do a food order like we used to do every month and see if we can have our first just food bank giveaway outside in the parking lot while we do that. Now, last year we gave away uh, 47,000 pounds of food, and and we want to do even more this year. And So we'll do a U-Haul order like we usually do. Um, we'll get some food out here for the neighborhood, and then we'll build out the food bank so when the food is done, like whatever's left over, we'll store it up there for people to shop. Amen? Amen. All right, so I have a friend, Brian, he's going to be here to share. He's going to be telling you more about his ministry here in a bit. Um, Brian came when I was back in the Ethiopian church. We've known each other for years, and came and spoke on giving, written a book on giving. I, hope, I don't know if you brought some of your books. It's yeah, there you go. And, and it revolutionized the way we thought about giving as a church. And as we were talking about generosity, I was like, who better to come speak to us as a church on that? So can you guys give a hand to Brian as he comes up to share? Yeah, thanks, brother. <laughs> hey, I'm excited to be here with you today. So, so grateful. And I want to share some scriptures with you. You know, I love to talk from the Bible. Do you know what the Bible is? The B-I-B-L-E? Yeah. Basic instructions before leaving earth. (laughs) That's the Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth. God's word is is a roadmap. It's an owner's manual. And when life doesn't work the way we think it could or think it should, God's word has answers. And when we kind of say, well, I had my answers, but I want to do it God's way, our life really begins to change in some amazing amazing ways. But I also want to encourage you to live a life of faith. Right, a life of faith. What is faith? F A I T H. What does that What does that stand for? Fantastic adventures and trusting Him. Fantastic adventures and trusting Him. God wants you to experience Him in your life. Whatever is going on, I look around right now. Got different ages, different people. Some are tuned in. Some are maybe somewhere else. But here's the thing: is God wants you to experience Him in intimate ways where you know that God is real and you're seeing God working in your life. So I want to talk today about five reasons why to become a generous Christian. Five reasons why. Because here's the deal. If you don't know why to do this, you'll never do it. You're like, well, why would I want to do that? Why would I want to take my time, take my stuff, take my money, and do anything but take care of me, right? I mean, that's just the world we live in. It's me, 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 whatever I want. But God's got a completely different plan. 
But you're not, you have to know why he wants you to be generous so you can experience it. Because if you don't know why, you're never going to do it. You're just going to go, no way, I'm not doing that. So I want to share with you five reasons why from the Bible and true stories. I want to I light you up a little bit today. I want you to realize that God wants to get hold of your life and really do some amazing things. So let's look at this together. Five reasons why you can, why it's so important to learn to become generous. It's not something, I'll say, you learn it. You don't, you're not born this way. You're not even born again this way. God has to teach you this in your faith journey. Okay, number one, why, why would you want to become generous? It helps you overcome financial fear and worry. Financial fear and worry. And there's a handout up here. If anybody wants to follow along, you can see what I'm writing down there. Financial fear and worry. Why are a lot of people not generous? Here's the deal. They look at their finances, which can be kind of messy, and they go like, ah, I just have enough, or I don't have enough, and if I give anything away, I'll have less, and that won't work. I mean, my life's not working now, and if I give anything away, it'll even be worse, and so there's this fear, and there's this worry, and there's this stress, and there's this panic always going on around money, and so you're just always struggling with money, so you're just like, no, 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 I can't be generous, I can't, I can't, I can't. Because you've done the simple math. And you say, wow, what I have is just enough or it's not enough. If I give anything away, that's not going to work. But God's got a completely different plan. (laughs) Completely different plan. Listen to this this verse in 1 Kings 17. There was this woman, all right? Uh, She was a single mom. That's tough right there, right? Uh, She had a son. Uh, but there was a three-year famine in the land. And I'm not talking about recession, not talking about COVID. We're talking about people dying of starvation. Not enough to eat. And there's no food banks. There's no welfare. There's no food stamps. There's nothing like that going on. This woman is trying to take care of her son, and, and it's getting worse and worse and worse, and people all around her are dying, right? Three years of no rain, so no rain, no food. There's no grocery store, there's no McDonald's, there's no drive through there's nothing. And in this Elijah, this prophet of God, talks to this woman. He says, hey, can you give me something to drink? And then he said, hey, and can you give me something to eat? And she, and she said, you know what? She said, hey, look, I have a little oil and a little flour, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it. I'm going to make a last meal. And then my son and I are going to eat it and die. One meal away from death. I don't think anybody in this room is one meal away from death. Right? Elijah says to her, don't be afraid. (laughs) Don't be afraid of you. What are you, an idiot? Haven't you read the news? Haven't you watched watched the news? There's a famine in the land. They're dying. He said, don't be afraid. That's all she knew was fear. All she knew was panic. And it was to the end of the line. She's, he said, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. She's going to go home and make that last meal, right? But first, from what she had, which wasn't enough, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. All right? All right? That's crazy, right? It's crazy. And the Bible says she went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah. She kept giving. And for the woman and her son. And then the Bible says in her family, the relatives started showing up. God stretched her resources in a way that she could never imagine. Now, some of you might say, well, Brian, that's a really nice Bible story, but hey, get real. <laughs> okay, let's get real for a moment. A friend of mine, Nancy, true story. Her husband left her. He was bad. And uh, left her. She didn't have a job. She got three kids. And he sent her a little bit of money every week to feed the family. It was not enough to feed one person. And he said, that's all you're getting. And I was talking to her, and she said, oh, I said, what are you going to do? She goes, I'm going to trust God. I'm like, what do you mean you're going to trust God? She said, Brian, I've got grocery money, 
and I'm going to give to God out of my grocery money because that's all I have. And I'm like, this is years ago. I'm like, Nancy, that is not a good idea. You don't have enough to take care of you and your three children. Don't, don't give anything away. <laughs> that was my attitude. And she said, no, I need God. And I'm going to trust him. So I'm going to give to God out of my grocery money and God's going to take care of us. That's what? F-A-I-T-H. That's a fantastic adventure in trusting him. I went and I saw her a number of months later. Nancy, how are you doing? How are you doing? She goes, Brian, you won't believe what happened. She said, I got hired by a cookbook company. I said, okay. And I, and I said, what did you do? She said, well, she said they would pay me to go grocery shopping and to buy all these foods, and then I would bring all the food home, and then I would make like a turkey dish, and a ham dish, and then cakes, and pies, and vegetables, and casseroles. I'd make all this stuff, and then they would come over to my house, and they'd take pictures of it for the cookbook. And she said, and then when they were done, they just told me I could have all the food. <laughs> so she said, so God provided. She's like, hey, we got all my grocery money, and God paid me to shop, paid me to cook, and then gave me the food. And she said, I'd invite family in, friends in. She said, I, I, it was a joy to see God at work. But you see that? It didn't make sense, right, for her to give out of her grocery money. But she trusted God and gave first out of her grocery money. Okay, number two here. There was a young, young man, he's in his probably late teens, early 20s, Genesis 28. He was running away from home. The guy's name was Jacob. He's running away from home. He's, he lied to his dad. His brother threatened to kill him. There was a lot of dysfunction in the family. The mother says, get out of town. Go to my brother's house, you know, Uncle Laban. It's a long ways away. Get out of town. You're gonna, this is a mess. And so, so Jacob r- basically runs away from home. He doesn't have any money. He doesn't, even, doesn't the Bible doesn't even say he has food. It says he has a rock for a pillow <laughs> and the clothes on his back and a staff in his hand. And he, he's run- and I think it's a couple days journey, a number of days journeys to get to his uncles. So he's in the wilderness by himself, right? Okay. And uh, he, so he lies down that night to sleep and he has a dream and he sees God. He sees literally the, the God on a throne and angels coming and coming down the coming up and down and, and and he wakes up and he goes, Whoa, God is real. God is real. You, you see, here's the reality with a lot of people. They know about God, they've heard about God, but they don't know God. It's very possible to be in church and you know about God and you don't know God. You don't know him intimately. You don't know him personally. But, and Jacob grew up in a home where they talked about God all the time, but he did not know God. And anyway, so he has this dream and he wakes up and he makes this vow, all right? Now, so he's afraid for his future. He doesn't know what's going to happen. Uncertain future, no money. And he says, God, if you will be with me on this journey I'm taking and you will watch over me and give me food to eat and clothes to wear. You will be my God and all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. He makes his vow. He had nothing. He had no money. He didn't have anything. When's a great time to start to, when when do you decide to become generous? Sometimes it's when you have nothing. (laughs) And all you do is you just say, God, right? (laughs) You say, really, here's how you do it. God, I believe you're God. And God, if you'll take care of me, food to eat, clothes to wear, right? If you take care of me, you'll be my God and all that you give me, whatever you give me, I will give you a tenth. It's a decision. It's a spiritual decision. Jacob made that decision. Here's a question. Have you? Have you made that decision? Have you said, God, I want you to be my God. And God, I I want you to care for me. And as you do that, and whatever you do, and however you do that, God, I'll give to you. Now, I had to make that decision, and I was in my 20s. Now, the truth was, I had more month than I had money. I had bills I couldn't pay. I remember getting my check one time. I'm like, this is not enough money. I got all these bills, and I got to live for two more weeks, and this isn't working. My finances are a mess. I'm a mess. And then there was a sense, God said, will you trust me, Brian? Trust you? Are you kidding? I'm just trying to make it through the day, through the week, through the month. Brian, trust me. How am I going to do that? Honor me. How am I going to do that? Give to me. Are you crazy? God, are you crazy? Are you crazy? 
And I remember the Lord was like, trust me. I'm like, okay. And with a shaking hand, God, I don't know. This is crazy. College bills, little paycheck. Okay, God. First check, I'll honor you. I'll give to you. And then you're going to have to help me figure out what to do. You, you see, there's the simple math. Generosity is God's crazy mathematics. God can do things. He can give you wisdom you never had. He can, he can give you provisions you could never imagine. He, he can guide you and provide for you and help you, give you self-control, help you stop being stupid with your money, all kinds of things. And, I, and in my tronies, I said, okay, God, I'm going to do it your way. And God started me on a journey. And I, and I, and I, and I, and I sometimes like to say this to people. Would you rather have 100% without the help and blessing of God or 90% with the help and blessing of God? What would you rather have in life? Would you rather have God involved in your finances and your life or do you want to cut him out, leave him out? I'll tell you what, <laughs> the better plan is go with God. Don't go with your, 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 your finances, your resources are limited. <laughs> They're finite. His resources are unlimited. They're infinite, right? He's the God who owns it all and loans it all. And so there's a real place to just say, God, I want to honor you. And I want to, and when you do that, and here, here's what I, I'll say, another thing I'll just say quickly. When I wasn't a giver, right? I just felt like a pauper. I just felt like a poor man all the time. I always wanted stuff. It's very materialistic. I felt like a pauper. But when I kind of opened my hands and started giving, instead of feeling like a pauper, I felt like a prince. I felt like, a, I felt like a, something happened inside of me, something different. When you, when you suddenly open your hand, see, if you're going like this, what can, what can go in, right? <laughs> not much. What can go out? Not much. But when you learn to open your hands, you receive from God and then you share what, with what God's given you. And there's something that happens inside of you and you, you feel differently. And I like to say, if, if you're a pauper and you learn to give, you'll feel like a prince. But if you're a prince, you might have a lot, but you're always going to feel like a pauper if you don't learn to be a giver. All right, so let's go on to the next one here. Number two, generosity helps you overcome pride and experience God as your provider. So some of you are here, you're like, well, I'm not worried about money. I, I'm fine. Everything's great. All right. But you could be filled with pride. But the Bible says this in Deuteronomy 8, 17 and 18. You may say to yourself, a little self-conversation, right? You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. Oh, you ever think that? It's all about me. It's all about what I've done. My brains, my power, my strength, my connections, my whatever, right? My hustle. My power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. God says, don't go there. Don't think like that. But remember the Lord your God. That to remember is to means to honor him, to recognize him. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. All right? If you're breathing right now, can you take the credit for your breath in your lungs? Can, can you say, man, you did that? If your heart's beating right now, can you say, man, you made your heart beat? If you have a bright mind and, and you've, you use your mind and you make some income, you make some wealth, can you, did you put your brain in your head? All right? Do you, do, you, do you put the strength in your body? No, anything you have came from God. Any, any abilities, any strength, any experiences, whatever you have that can, can benefit others and can produce wealth comes from God. You can't take all the credit for it. And God says, okay, I bless you to make you a blessing to others, and, and, and I want to bless you and so that also you can be a blessing to others in your personal life, but also in your, your resources, your stuff, your finances, your things. We're to honor God. You know, a lot of people get caught in workaholism. If it's going to be, it's up to me is their attitude. If it's going to be, it's up to me. And, and they're hustling. They're working 60, 70, 80 hours a week and are doing all this stuff. God says, no, God says he gives to his beloved even in their sleep. God can provide for you. All right? So the, this whole idea, God says, no, don't be proud. Don't be proud. Learn to see me as your provider. 
I'm bigger than you are. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 16, 2. Fascinating verse. On the first day of the week, each of you should set aside some income and save it to the extent that God has blessed you. Now, this is something you probably have never heard. Probably have never heard this thought, all right? First day of the week, each of you should set aside some income and save it to the extent that God has blessed you. What God invites us to do, invites you to do, and I'll guarantee you this will change your life. If you're listening right now and you hear what I say and you go home and do this, your life will never be the same. How's that for a guarantee? <laughs> your life will never be the same. One simple practice. Here's the practice. On the first day of the week, write yourself an email. Or write yourself, put it in a notebook. Answer the question. Okay, you're sitting here on Sunday. Today's Sunday. What did God do to provide for you the last seven days? And think back. Okay, what did we do yesterday? What happened yesterday? Saturday? Okay, what about Friday? What did we do Friday? What was going on on Friday? I went shopping on Friday. Oh, I went over to Kohl's. Oh, yeah, I got some. I got, yeah, I walked out of Kohl's. I bought something worth three hundred dollars, and I walked out and paid twenty bucks. You saved two hundred eighty dollars. If you've ever gone to Kohl's, you know what I'm talking about. All right. <laughs> so okay, so on, on Friday you were at Kohl's and you did a little shopping and you got a little blessing there. On Thursday, okay, you got your paycheck. Okay, where you write that down? Oh, on Wednesday night you went out with a friend and they picked up the meal. That's pretty cool. And you were going to buy your own meal, but they picked up the meal. So that was worth, you know, $30. And then on Tuesday, some, you know, someone gave you some birthday money or whatever it is. And then there was Monday, all right? And so you just, you just think back seven days and then you write down what happened. What were the provisions that came into your life? What did God do? Because the Bible teaches us that God provides for us but, and some of you say, well, what are you talking about, Brian? Well, here's what I'm talking about. Here, you can use this. On Sunday nights, use this. Right? Sunday nights, use this. Look down this list. There's, there's 10 ways God provides. There's actually about 50 on the list. 50 ways God provides for you. All right? Did any of these happen in the last seven days? One way God provides is a paycheck. But if your paycheck's not big enough, it's okay, because God has many other ways to provide. All right? So you just say, God, did you do any of this this week? and then write it down. Write it down. All right? Once you write it down, add up the value of what you wrote down. All right? Add up the value of what you wrote down. Add up the value of what you wrote down, and then come up with the amount, and then take at least a tenth of it and put it into a giving account. Now, that giving account could be a jar. It could be a budget line item. In my case, it's on our phone. If you open up my phone and I go to my Chase Bank, we have checking accounts, we have saving accounts, and we have a giving account. So if there was $400 of blessings that I could account up in a week, I would put $40 into a giving account. Just transfer the money over there, all right? So we have money we live on and we have money we give on based on what? The blessings of God. So I was saying to my wife this week, I said, okay, so what happened this week again, all right? So we're going back. Well, on Thursday, we went, we've been trying to buy my son a car. Uh, and, um, and so we, we originally set aside $5,000 to get him a car, uh, help him get a car. And then as we looked at it, we, we just, I don't know if you've bought a car lately. It's crazy out there. Crazy, 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 right? So $5,000 would get us a 25-year-old truck with 300,000 miles with rust on it. I mean, it was just bad. You know, and so we said, okay, we, we upped it and we, we changed the amount to 8000 We're going to look for an $8,000 car. So I went to the Nextdoor app, and I just went to rent the Nextdoor app, and I put on there, I said, anyone have a dependable SUV truck or car for sale, five to 7000 I was giving myself a little extra margin, right? So, but I had 8000 in my mind, right? So we did that. A guy texted me, and he had a SUV in great shape. And uh, it was only like eight minutes from my house. Um, we went and looked at it. Uh, we bought it for 4500 okay? Bought it for 4500 But when we got home, we went on the Kelly Blue Book. It's worth 10000 It's worth 10000 So, all right, go back to the story, right? So we're going to send ourselves an email tonight, right? So what are we going to write down? We're going to write down, you know, we're willing to spend $8,000 on a vehicle, but what do we buy it for? 4500 right? 
So what's the blessing there? The blessing was worth, what, $3,500, right? God, no, no, 40, 3,500, 3,500, right? Thank you, 3,500, all right? So you're with me, right? So you're with me. So, we, so there was a $3,500 blessing. So in the principle of this, what I'm telling you is we're going to give a thank offering to God by setting aside 10% of that, that blessing. So we're going to put $350 into our giving account. Some people say, well, that's a lot of money you're giving away. I said, no, 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 no. Look what God did. God just saved us $3,500. So as a way to thank God and acknowledge that he did it, we're going to put $350 into the giving account. That's not costing me. I was ready to spend $8,000, right? But that could happen with a meal with a friend. You know, a meal, with a, you know, you, you go, someone buy your meal and it's whatever it's worth. It's $3, it's, it's $30 and you set aside three. You say, well, what's, what difference is three or four or five dollars going to make? You can change someone's life with five dollars. I'm going to show you today how you can change someone's world, blow their world apart away for five dollars or ten dollars or twenty dollars, all right? Because the reality is if you set it aside, God will show you where, who to give it to when he wants you to give it. You can, you can do things with $5 that you set aside unto God that God will direct you if you have a giving account. Now, how do you have a giving account? You look back over the blessings of God, all right? That's a game changer. <laughs> That's a game changer. Your life will never, never, never be the same. Because here's the truth. I've been doing this for 40 years. I've written down thousands and thousands and thousands of provisions of God. God has been amazing, but we've seen it because we were writing it down. All right, let's go to number here, three here. Um, number three, generosity helps you bring God's peace and order to your finances. God's peace and order. How do you get God's provisions? Matthew 6, Seek first his kingdom, his righteousness. All these things shall be added to you as well. Deuteronomy 14, 22, be sure to set aside, have a giving account, a tenth of all that your fields produce each year. All right, let me explain how this, is, what I, how this works. All right, imagine today I got up and I got this jacket on. This church is casual, so I didn't have to wear this today, so that's okay. But imagine I got up and I got dressed this morning and I came over here and I put this button right here, okay? <laughs> and I get over here to the church and David says, <coughs> Brian, hey, and before you get up there, you might want to fix your jacket. Like, oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Um, uh, okay, here, I got a button, I got a buttonhole. Great. Okay, good, I'm good, right? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> and you're like, like, no, 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 you're not good, man. Just, just fix your jacket. I like, oh, sh- I don't have enough buttons. If I just had enough, if I had more buttons, I wouldn't have this problem. <laughs> and you'd be like, no, no, Brian, you promise not the buttons. No, 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 I, I need more buttons. A lot of people with money. If I had more money, I would be okay. I just need more money. And if I had more money, then this wouldn't happen. And you'd be like, no, 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 no Brian, just fix your jacket. <laughs> and I'd be like, I said, oh, no, I, I need more buttonholes. I need more buttons. I, I, I need, I, there, there's the, there's the, Oh, no, I don't know where the other, there's a button. And there's a button, oh, good, okay, I'm good. Oh, now, there we go, good, right? Okay, this is a lot of people's finances, right here, all right? This is a lot of people's finances. And the answer is not more buttonholes, the answer is not more buttons. What's the answer? Get the order right. Get the order right. Remember when I was telling the story about me <laughs> with my little paycheck and my big pile of bills and all that? I was, this was me right here. I, this, is what, this is where I was. And God said, Brian, get the order right. So I was like, okay, God. <gasps> <gasps> okay, order right. Give to God first. <sighs> wow. Hey, this is, this is going, this is good, this is good. This is good. <laughs> Wow, God, you're oh man, God, you're amazing. <laughs> That's what you gotta do. I've done a lot of debt counseling. I, I dealt with people all I've dealt with people huge finance. Some people making 150000 a year. 
You just think, well, I, I would do great if I'm making 150000 a year. No, you wouldn't if you're spending 180000 a year. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so everybody I did debt counseling with, I would say, I'd ask, here's the, I'd say, here's my question to you. Will you give to God first? And they're like, are you crazy? I said, no, no, no. I'm not crazy. You've been crazy. <laughs> I'm trying to help you get out of crazy. <laughs> And you need to, well, what do you mean give to God first? I mean give to God first. You get, in, you get financial blessings, you get income, you give to God. And like, that's crazy. No, you're crazy. We're going to get God into your crazy and help you out of your crazy. And it'll like be like, are you, are you nuts? I said, I'm not nuts. Are you serious? I'm serious. So you want us to give to God first, even though we got crazy going on. Yeah, because I don't have a spreadsheet solution for your problems but I know that God will guide you and provide you and show you the way out. It's not going to happen in a day or a week or a month, but in the months to come. And here's the truth, folks. Half the people I work with said, okay. Okay, we're going to do that. And I saw them come out of that hole, come out of that bondage. I saw them come out. And the other half would say, we're not doing that. And I'd say, I can't help you. And I'd see him in the grocery store a year or two later. How is it? Oh, it's worse than it's ever been. I saw it. I saw those who got the order right and everything began to change. All right, number four. Generosity helps you fight off greed and the dragon of materialism. Luke 12, 15. Watch out! Oh, what, 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 what? Watch out! What, 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 what? Jesus says, Watch out! <laughs> Be on your guard against all kinds of greed because life does not consist in the abundance of your possessions. The latest phone, the coolest clothing, the sharpest car, the bigger house, the fancier vacation, whatever. Life does not consist in the abundance of your possessions. And God, God wants to work in your life. It says, be careful. Don't let greed suck you in. I had a friend of mine. I said, why are you generous? He said, oh, that's easy. I said, well, what's the answer? He said, it helps me fight the dragon. I'm, what, what are you talking about, the dragon? He said, the dragon of materialism. He said, Brian, every day that dragon stalks me. And what I read and what I see and the billboards and the radio commercials and the TV commercials and what my friends have. And it's always, you, don't, you need this, you need that. You don't, you, don't, you don't have enough. You need the newer, the faster, the bigger, the better. He said, you need, 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 need. And he said, here's what happens. When I give, it's like taking out a sword and, te- and taking out a sword. And when I give, it's like telling the dragon, back off, back off. He said, I'm content. God has given me everything I need. I don't need all that stuff. Here's what I want to tell you. Contentment. This is true. Think about this. Contentment will never come from getting everything you want. It will never come from getting everything you want. Contentment comes from being thankful for everything you already have and sharing it. All right? Some of you say, what? Let me prove it to you. Let me just say to you today, I hand out a piece of paper. Actually, I say, okay, on this sheet of paper here, I want you to write down everything you want. And you took five minutes and you write down everything you want. Everything you want. Anything you want. You write it down. And then I say, okay, now go put the figure on. What's it going to take? You want a new house? What's it going to take? You want a new car? What's it going to take? You want a vacation? What's it going to take? You want this? What's it, going to, what's it going to take to give you everything you want? All right? So you do all that. And then I say, add it up. Add it up. So you all add it up. And then I say, I'll meet you at the door on the way out. And I'll give you whatever you wrote down at the bottom. You'd be like, man, am I glad I came to church, Pastor David. <laughs> hey, you ought to have that guy next week, too. <laughs> Imagine I did that. And I gave you a check for whatever you wrote down. Guess what? Six months, you got a new list. Because everything you want can't bring contentment. Contentment comes from being thankful for everything you already have and sharing it. And then sharing it. Even back with the kids, I see some kids here. With my kids, we had three envelopes when they were little. There was a God envelope, a savings envelope, and a spending envelope. 
And whenever they got any money, girls, you know, any you know, birthday money, Christmas money, allowance, whatever they got, or, you know, a project money, we went into the bedroom and they put money in God's envelope and then a savings envelope and then a spending envelope. Bring God's order to your finances. Uh, fight off the dragon of materialism, right? Let me... Um, let me get, continue on here. We're getting, landing, getting close to landing the plane. Let me talk to you real quickly about 1 Timothy 6. 6, starting at 17. Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud. All right? Now, if I say rich in this world, you think of yourself? Are you rich in this world? So... Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud, not to put their trust in money, which is so unreliable, especially these days. Their trust should be in God, who richly gives us all we need for enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do good. Now, a lot of you say, well, that, that's nice, Brian, but that's not me. Let, well, let me just say you were someone, you were in the top 1% of the richest people in the world. If, if someone's in the rich, if, if you're in the 1% or the 2% or the 10% or the 20% or the 25 If you're in the top 25% of the richest people in the world, do you think you should be generous? Do you think those people at that level should be, it would probably be good to be generous, right? Okay. Well, let me tell you how to, let me tell you, give you the numbers. I just looked it up today, global rich list. If you make 60,000 or more today, annually, that's you. Congratulations, you have arrived. Arrived? What do you mean? You're in the top 1% of the richest people on the planet. Wow. You are so stinking rich. <laughs> and you didn't even know it for 60,000. What if you make 40,000? Well, you're in the top 2%. You're smoking. <laughs> Amazing. What if you work 10 hours a week for 15 bucks a week? Man, you were in the top 25% of the world's population. You make seven grand. You are rocking it. Let me read this verse again. Tell those who are rich in this world. not to be proud, tell them to use their money that God gave them to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. By doing this, they will be storing up treasures as a good foundation of the future so that they may experience true life. So let me give you, what, let me just give you a $10 example. A $10 example of you being rich in this world, using your money to do good, being rich in good works, generous to those in need, be ready to share. Yeah, we go to Africa. We go to Africa every year except for COVID. And when we go to Africa, uh, people don't have electricity there. So imagine your life without electricity. So at night, your option is a candle or you got one of these in the kitchen table. That's it. And the kids at night do their homework to kerosene lamps. That lamp is going to smell. That lamp is going to smoke. The child, after about 45 minutes, is going to get a headache. It's going to burn their eyes. They're going to get stuff in their nose. They're going to get stuff in their lungs. But this is the only light you have, so kids, suck it up. That's life. That's life. And this kerosene will ultimately cause a lot of sickness and even death. The greatest problem in the world is not dirty water. The greatest problem in the world is dirty smoke. And one of the things is from a kerosene lamp on a kitchen table in Africa and Asia. Now, you come along, you give a family a $10, $10. You give them a $10 solar lamp. That'll last 72 hours. That'll last eight hours. That'll last five hours. It's five times brighter than that solar lamp. You put it over your family at night, you now can have dinner. Your children can now study without any problems. You can do some projects at home. You can read. You can do whatever. You want to go outside at night, suddenly now you've got a, you got a flashlight. you got a flashlight to put in your pocket. 
ain't go anywhere. It's durable. Throw it down. Come over here. Take it. I'll stand on it. All right. It's going to last five years. And for $10, you change the life of a family for five years. Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share. Okay, that's one thing. But what about water? That's the second biggest problem in the world. All right. Imagine this is what you get to drink every day. Take a look. For much of the world, this is it. There's no running water. There's no clean water. You're going to drink this every day. You can boil it if you want. That'll help some, but it won't completely solve it. You're going to be sick 30, 40, 50 days a year, you and your children. Diarrhea and all kinds of other things, coughing, fevers. And you can't do anything about it. You can't do anything about it because that's all you've ever known. And then someone comes along and gives you this water filter, $60. $60 to give a family two buckets and a water filter. This water filter will turn this pond scum into this drinking water. $60. What do you, how quickly can you go spend $60? <laughs> go to Walmart, go to Home Depot, go to Lowe's, go to the grocery store, go to King Supers, go out to lunch. $60 gone like that. You consume it in a moment. No big deal, right? But on the other side of the world, $60 does this. Folks, we have no idea what much of the world lives like. And yet our generosity can change lives on the other side of the world. Number five, generosity helps you bless others and experience real joy. Psalm 67, 7, God blesses us so that all of the ends of the earth will worship him. If you feel blessed by God, if you feel blessed by God in any way, God wants those blessings to stretch to the ends of the earth. Uh, I, my wife is saying, you got to tell the story. You got to tell the... There's one story she really likes. I'm telling it just for her, right? Not for you, but for her. Well, <laughs> one of the, so I meet, a, I meet a guy from the ends of the earth. He's from Tashkent. Most of you have no idea where that is. It's the other side of the world. If you go any further, you're coming home, all right? All the way to the other side of the world. The guy comes to America. I get to meet him. So we're, we're talking and, and we're talking. I spent about an hour with him and he's here in America for like a month and he has no money, but he has airplane tickets to get where he needs to go and people will pick him up. So anyway, so as I'm talking with him, I, at the end, I said, hey, let me pray for you. And so I pray for him. And while I'm praying for him, the spirit of God says, give him everything in your wallet. You know, all the, give him all the money in your wallet. And I'm like, I wonder how much money I got in my wallet. I don't, I don't like having money in my wallet. I'm a digital guy. I'm a card guy. I'm like, okay, I might have 40 bucks in there. Eh, sometimes I put a $100 bill behind a little flap just in case I might need it. So I'm like, okay, it might cost me 40 bucks. It might cost me 100. It might cost me 140. But anyway, so I'm done praying. I say to the guy, I said, hey, while I was praying, God said, give me everything. I'm going to give you everything in my wallet. So put your hands out. So the guy puts his hands out. And so I started going to my wallet and every flap had money. <laughs> there was a 50 and there was a 100 and there were some 20s and there was a 100. And I'm like, where's this money coming from? And it kept piling up in his hand and it kept getting bigger and bigger. And I'm like, and so he's looking at it. His eyes are wider, but my eyes are wider than his eyes. I'm like, oh my goodness, how much money is in my wallet? And we get all done and he goes, did you want to give me all this money? I said, no, no, no. <laughs> he said, how much is there? I said, I have no idea. Let's count it. It was $568. $568. He goes, do you want some back? I said, no, no. God told me, give you everything in my wallet. All I'm being is obedient. He goes, where'd you get all that money? I said, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. How can you get $568 in your wallet and you not know how it got there? Think about that, right? To, to this day, I think it was a miracle. I think God, in the sovereignty of God, somehow, some way, loaded up my wallet and it told me to give it all away. And I said, okay. You think he went away blessed? Right? 
Think away, he went away rejoicing. Generosity helps you bless others and experience real joy. Look, listen to this, Luke 16, I, I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourself. Whoa, did you know that was in the Bible? <laughs> Can we buy our friends? Is the Bible telling us to buy our friends? Use, I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourself. No, friends for heaven, friends for eternity, right? I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourself so that when it is gone, you'll be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Some of you here today are going to give a gift, God willing, to the work we're doing. Here's the deal. We're going to take whatever you give. We're going to take the money and we're going to go buy some of these, we're going to buy some of these and do some other things, right? We're going to give this to somebody in Africa. Someday you're going to die and you're going to go to heaven if you know Christ. And those people that you gave this to in Africa, they're going to die, they're going to go to heaven. And you know what's going to happen? They're going to come looking for you. Say, do you remember what you did in 2022? Well, you say, what are you talking about? There's that guy that came to your church and you gave some money for solar lamp or for a water filter or whatever. And I just, I just, I want to tell it. Come to my house. I want to tell you what God did. I want to tell you what he did with clean water, how he helped our family. I want to tell you what that light meant to us and our kids studying. I want to tell you what you did. And in heaven, you'll have a friend forever because of a $10 solar lamp or a $6 water filter or helping a little girl. Talk about that in a moment. God can use us to bless others, but it brings joy to us, all right? Listen to this. I'm going to close with this last one here. 2 Corinthians 9, 11, 14. You will be enriched in every way so that, all right, you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. All right? So two good things will come from, the, from your giving. The needs of believers will be met and they will joyfully express their thanks to God and they will give glory to God and they will pray for you with deep affection. So when you give a gift that it really helps somebody that's needy, God can work in an amazing way. And there's all this praise that goes on. There's all this rejoicing that goes on. Uh, there's all this prayer for you that goes on. And I want you to listen to what it sounds like. You see, one of the things we do in Africa is we, spot, we have spot child sponsorships. These are pictures of little girls that we're looking to have sponsors for in Uganda. All right, pictures of these gals. One of the gals, I'm gonna let you hear this in just a moment. Uh, we talked to her in January. They've been locked out of school for two years. Uh, locked out of school for two years and she got in touch with me and she, and she was a very bright girl. She's 16 now. We knew her when she was eight. Very bright girl. And uh, we got talking to her through WhatsApp. And, uh, and Facebook Messenger and her family. And she said, Daddy, I, they call me Daddy, uh, I can't go back to school. Uh, we have no funds. Can't go back to school. My, myself and my sister, we can't go back to school. And I'm like, oh, Vicki, I feel so bad, you know. Uh, let me pray. Maybe we can find a way to help. Maybe you can find a sponsor. Maybe, you know, we can, let's pray. You know, because you're very bright and you're very gifted and you're very talented. And we, we want you to go back to school, but let's pray. And, and so on, it was January 10th, school was starting. And on January, uh, that was on Monday. And on the Friday night before we got hold of her, we said, Vicki, we got sponsors for you and your daughter, you, you and your sister, and you can go to school on Monday. And here's what she sent. And you need to listen to this. Just talking about these verses, when you help the needy, two things will result. Their needs will be met. They'll joyfully express thanks to God. They'll give glory to God and they will pray for you. I'm so happy. May God wish you bless you. My sister is very happy. She's even crying. Everyone is crying tears of joy. My mom is very happy and I'm also very happy and I'm proud of you. I love you. I always pray blessings from God. I pray for you every day. I love you so, so much and I promise you I'll not disappoint you. I'll have to work hard. Thank you. I appreciate. We love you too, too. We love you so much. I sing this song crying tears of joy. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. 
All my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your generosity can cause people to sing and worship God and pray for you. I could go buy a new car. I could go get a different house. I can go on a fancy vacation, but I'll have more joy in this than any of that stuff. We were able to see her in, in, April, in March, able to spend time with her and her sister and her mother and her brother. What a wonderful time. But here's what I want you to know. God wants to bless you and make your blessing. But, but you've got to say, God, I want, I want, I want to experience you. I, I want you as my provider. And God, what, what you give me, I'll let it flow to me and through me. He wants to make you a blessing. You know, one of the thing I want to just uh, mention on, as I close here, and I want to pray, is there's a little card here, 40-Day um, Journey to a More Generous Life. It's a little Bible devotional I wrote. There's, it's 40 days of Bible reading, 400 scriptures on finances and generosity that can help you in your life. Every day there's audio teaching. Every day there's a story. Uh, every day there's a cartoon, all right? And you go through that, and God will take that, his word and just bring it to life inside of you. But the other thing is there's these little cards. And the idea of the cards is you just cut them apart. You put them in your wallet, put them in your purse. Just have them. And, and, and God will prompt you to help somebody. You'll meet a stranger. You'll be somewhere like I was, I was telling Pastor David today. I was in a, a bakery one time, a couple of little Korean girls, maybe 11, 12 years old. I said, girls, can I do something nice for you today? And they're like, sure. What do you want to do for us? I said, I want to buy your bakery. So you pick out whatever you want in that, in, that, in that counter right there, and I'll buy it. They said, you do that for us? I said, yeah, why would you do that? Because I want you to know how much God loves you today. And so then I took one of these little cards. So they got their bakery. They're all excited, right? And so I said, now here, here's a card. So they looked at the card and said, I hope this act of kindness brightened your day. And they said, it did, it did. I said, now turn it over. It says, tag, you're it. Pay it forward. Keep it going. Now, you need to go do something kind for somebody else. He said, we can do that. And I said, and when you go home, there's a video here about how much God loves you. When you, when you go home, can you watch that video? Yeah, we'll watch it. I said, you know what? It's even in Vietnamese. You know Vietnamese, right? Yeah, we do. All right, when you go home, you find the Vietnamese version of the video about how much God loves you. And they said, we'll do that. But it's just living that life of generosity, pointing people to the love of God, helping people uh, experience God. Every one of you here can do it. Every child can. Every a child can do this. A little girl in the school, she'd go up to like an elderly person. Can I do something nice for you today? And they say, Well, what do you want to do? Can I give you a hug? <laughs> And they'd say, well, sure, honey. She'd give a big squeeze, and she'd say, and I have a little card for you. <laughs> she'd hold up the card. Well, what's this card, honey? God loves you, and I want you to go home and watch that video on how much God loves you. Okay, honey, we'll do that. <laughs> See, that, that wasn't money at all. That was just an act of kindness. You are blessed to be a blessing. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for every person in this room. Lord, I pray that something would happen in their hearts today. I pray that something would happen in their lives and they would begin to, on Sundays, look back and count their blessings, count the provisions. They would begin to set aside resources. They would, they would begin to give like they've never given. They, they'd begin to see like they've never seen. They'd begin to have joy like they've never had. They would be, begin to have contentment like, like, it's been, like they've never experienced. God, I pray your blessing on them all and individually that they might live in the joy of the Lord, that they might live with you as a provider, that they might live with open hands, that they might be looking to you as the, their source, and that they would just be a blessing wherever you take them and to strangers and friends and neighbors and people around the world. God, bless them and make them a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.
Okay. Can we give Brian a hand? Thank you so much. Uh, I'm gonna ask Tanner and Marjorie to come on up here for a time of response uh, before we take communion. I know we're a little behind on time, but this is essential. Um, this is essential that we uh, pray about what God is doing in your heart. And if you're challenged, just pray through it. We're gonna take two, three minutes to just respond to what you heard. Um, talk to Brian after the service about some of those things in your heart. If God is challenging you, um, just to let you know a little bit of his heart, uh, a, a lot of speakers, when they come to a place, they'll ask for some kind of honorarium or gift, and it's customary that you do something. And Brian said, no, we, we, don't, we don't take that. It says, we just want to be able to share about what God is doing through our ministry all over the world, and we'll, we'll allow God to move on the hearts of the people where they want to invest. And so that's just, their heart is just to make a difference. And so um, let's just go to a time of response and prayer. I don't know where that music's coming from. Oh, okay, I was like, I was like no, you're fine. <laughs> I was, I thought it was me. You could. <laughs> it is good music. Um, let's let's pray, Father. We love you, Lord. Um, just do what you want to do in this time as we respond to you. Move on our hearts. If you need prayer for anything, guys, we'll be in the back. John and Tammy are also here to pray for you. If you need prayer, they'll be on the corners. But let's just take a few minutes and we'll pass around the communion. Rushing wind, would you breathe within my heart? heart. And through the raging storm, would you hold me in your arms? Because I need. sing out your praise cause I need you how I need you cause I need you Inside my mouth, burning my heart just like a fire. Come and take me over. Jesus, draw me closer to your heart, to your heart, to your heart. It's where I want to be forever, in your heart, in your heart. Home. You're closer than my every breath, closer than my every step. 
breath You're closer than the song I sing You're closer than anything You're closer than my every breath You're closer than my every step You're closer than the song I sing You're closer than anything Closer, closer than my every breath you're closer than my every step You're closer than the song I sing You're closer than anything I need your love like I need water I need your love like I need breath Inside my mouth Burning my heart just like a fire Come and take me over Jesus, draw me closer to your heart, to your heart, to your heart. It's where I want to be forever, in your heart, in your heart, in your heart. Let's all stand together as we prepare to take the Lord's communion. Um, I'm going to read out of 1 Corinthians 11, um, verse 23. And we'll do this together. It says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Father, we love you, Lord. Thank you for giving your life breaking your body, spilling your blood. Lord, you did all this on our behalf, and Lord, we proclaim it, we declare it, we thank you for the righteousness that you bestow upon us. Lord, we don't earn anything, we don't work for anything, Lord, we receive it. You're a good, good Father, and we receive the gift of salvation, we receive the gift of righteousness, the gift of holiness, the blessing that comes as being sons and daughters of the Most High God, Lord, we receive that today. Uh, I pray a blessing over everyone as they leave here this morning. I pray that you bless them and keep them. You cause your face to shine upon them. You're gracious unto them. Lift your countenance towards them and give them peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys.